Dante devotes almost one half of the Inferno to describing the ten smaller circles that together make up the eighth circle of hell. These are the malabolges, the evil ditches, all of which are reserved for liars who committed fraud for their own gain, ranging from sexual predators, seducers, and panderers in Canto 18, to counterfeiters and perjurers in Cantos 30 and 31. In Canto 19, Dante describes Simonizers, ecclesiastical leaders who abuse their spiritual heavenly authority by selling church offices to the highest bidder, rather than awarding them based on spiritual and moral qualifications. Then in Canto 21, he describes baritors, public officials who abused their civic earthly authority by selling positions, power, justice, rather than by ruling rightly. And sandwiched between them, between heaven and earth, as it were, are two groups in one malabolge, astrologers and diviners, that is, false prophets who defraud others by selling what they claim is knowledge of the future, and then magicians and witches, on the other hand, who defraud others by claiming to sell the power to control, manipulate, or even kill other human beings by magic. The canto begins with Dante seeing souls that are walking slowly like litanies or ecclesiastical choirs around the circle of the Malbolge, slowly because their heads have been turned 180 degrees so that they can only see where they have been, not where they are going. The sight of their deformed bodies then upsets him so much that he starts weeping, and he can hardly stand. He even breaks the fourth wall and challenges the reader to imagine how he felt. Now, what's interesting here is that Dante does not yet know who they were, and so he doesn't know their sin, nor does he know why they've been deformed like this. But Virgil nonetheless rebukes him for his lack of understanding by calling him witless or foolish and warning him, quote, here pity lives when it is well dead line 28, by which Virgil means that here, in hell, pity is not appropriate, because each judgment has been perfectly matched by God to the sin which the damned chose to live by. In this case, Dante uses fortune-telling to typify all magic, whether it's by looking at the stars, astrology, or looking at entrails, that is, sacrificed animals, or by uh, potions or wax images, By putting them all in one circle, they're all sinners walking blindly with backwards turned heads because they claim to be able to see into the future, but now they walk without being able to see even their next step. Sorcery, or magic of any sort, whether astrology or augury, that is reading the entrails of sacrificed animals, or controlling and even killing others by herbs and waxen dolls, he says, con erbe e con imago, all of this is forbidden because the hour of one's death is appointed by God. Because it is God's work to change the human heart, and most importantly for the future tellers, God alone knows the end from the beginning, as he says in the prophecy of Isaiah several times, and because as Jesus Christ calls himself at the end of the book of Revelation, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. To claim to know the future, then, is to claim that one has the power of God on tap, ready to use for a price, just like those who offer to use potions to cause someone else to love or to hate or even to kill them by stabbing or melting a wax figurine again for a price, also claim the power of God. They defraud their customers by claiming knowledge, abilities, and powers that they don't have and they can't have, a form of blasphemy that shows just how blind they are to reality. And because they claim to see the future by studying the stars or entrails or other omens, Dante focuses on future tellers, they now see only the past stumbling their way into the future. And both of these types of frauds succeed because human beings want to know what will happen next, what will happen after us, just as it's also human to want to control other human beings. The desire to know good and evil and to be like God, as the snake said to Eve in Genesis 3. And Dante writes, remember, not only to describe the fates of the damned, but to warn his readers about the fates that they are making for themselves, much like the English novelist Evelyn Waugh. He He says, in essence, if you want to live unto yourselves without God, this is how you'll end up. Well, 
Three quick final thoughts. After identifying three classical prophets, Amphiaros, Teresius, and Arens, Virgil points out Teresius' daughter, the prophet Manto, who finally settled on an island in a swamp in Italy where she practiced her magic. Then, long after she died, which is implied by the phrase, on those dead bones, other people came along and settled on the same site and named it Mantua in her honor. Most people think that Virgil spends so much time on this obscure bit of Italian history, it takes up a third of the canto, um, because he was born in a Mantuan village, and so was said to be from Mantua. But he wants Dante to know that Mantua's location, unlike that of most cities in antiquity, was not determined by augury or by divination, which is the sin condemned in this circle, but was simply a place where people settled and named in honor of Manto. Secondly, by placing them within the circles designed for the fraudulent, Dante implies that these so-called prophets and magicians knew that they were lying about their abilities. That's what the fraud is, to lie about something. But that didn't stop them from charging others for their so-called knowledge. And then thirdly, in their circle alone, out of all the circles of hell, none of the damned interact with Dante or even acknowledge his presence. Those whose fraud consisted of telling are damned never to speak throughout eternity. Canto 20.